Welcome to the Dave Palma Show, the podcast that revives, restores, and awakens your innermost capabilities. You have the training and the talent to succeed, but do you have the guts to fail? I love what I do. When you love what you do, you want to be the best at it. Today is about the power of you. You will change the world. Find your path to success through the journey of those who have succeeded. And now, your host, Dave Palma. Hi, welcome, welcome back to the Dave Palmer Show. And this is the relaunch of, uh, well, probably Series 3 because I've had another relaunch before. So um, here we go. Uh, well, today I have a special episode. Uh, I have with me an entrepreneur and one of the top music producers and composers in the industry and has a life-changing project called 100 Days Challenge. He's an undeniable legacy within the music industry and having worked with Nicki Minaj, Katy Perry, Snoop Doggy Dog, his work is current and also features in films and Netflix series. Working at such a high level, his life has brought challenges, money problems, and lessons he's eager to share with you. Marcus Bell, AKA Bell Ringer, welcome to the Day Palmer Show. Ah, uh, thanks so much for having me. So good uh, to be here with you. Pleasure to have you here, Marcus. Pleasure to have you. And uh, well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, uh, well into music as well. My, my, I had a cousin that sadly passed away in um, October, sorry, December last year, but he was an international DJ. So he, intervie he interviewed a few sort of big stars. He had his own radio show as well. So <laughs> sort of radio as they're running the family of music. So you're, you're carrying the legacy. Yeah, carrying it on, carrying it on. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so it's so, so great to really um, start this um, uh, first episode of the, you know, my um, third series, if you like, uh, with, with such a great guest like you, um, with all the work you've done. But obviously life wasn't great. Everyone has their ups and downs and you certainly had yours. Uh, we're going to talk about how you got into the 100 Days Impact Challenge um, because um, that, that's been going strong. It's been going for how long, Marcus? Yeah, so we, we launched the 100 Days Impact Challenge on January 20th. Okay. Right. So okay. Around the same time that Joe Biden here in the U.S. got One. into office. Yeah, yeah. So that was right. good. Right. <laughs> and, and so, so, so basically, the hundred days concept came from the Roosevelt era. Oh, okay. When Roosevelt got on the radio and yeah. said and declared the hundred days to take the country out of the Great Depression. Yeah. And so that started the tradition where. When a president comes into office here in the states as soon as yeah. they start their 100 days starts right and right, with that 100 days they try and get as much as they can done right yeah, so, right. so because it is said that that sets the tone of their four years or eight years however long they're able to stay in that's in right office. yeah because and, i've seen um you know they always say right let's let's measure the 100 days after the u.s president's been in office there's always that measurement of the 100 days isn't it yeah, yeah, and, and the so, media always puts that hundred days. In. Yeah, and so and so the hundred days impact challenge, hundred days with a Z, uh, impact challenge, came about out of this group uh, that is called Wealth and Impact Bootcamp. It's a a program that I created to help people go from success to significance, and it yeah. helps entrepreneurs and coaches and and influencers and politicians and and so forth. And around the time election was happening. I challenged that community to elect themselves. Right. Right. So, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so, so when I was looking at, well, what are all the components of someone electing themselves, right? You have to have a platform, right? If you and your listeners were to, to take on electing yourselves, right? You would have to have a platform. Like, what are you standing for? And yeah. what are you going to do in your, in your elections and, and your elections being kind of like your life, right? Yeah, yeah. And so here's a hundred days for you to re-elect yourself. Yeah. Right? Right. I see. Re-elect yeah. yourself and take a hundred days and get after the most important aims for your life. The most important aims for your if using this metaphor fully, right? The most important aims for your platform. Yeah. Right. right. I'll say, yeah, yeah. Like that. And so, so that, that's where the hundred days impact challenge came, uh, came about. And so what I saw was when I 
put on forth that challenge. I checked in because I do a webinar every month with that group. Oh, okay. With this? Yeah, with, with that group. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, with the Wealth and Impact Bootcamp group. And so I came, came back on and asked, well, how's your 100 days challenge going, right? And one woman got on the webinar and said, oh my gosh, it's completely shifting my health. I took on a health challenge wow. and my health has gotten improved because I have Lyme disease. And oh. my doctors are saying, oh, your health is getting improved. What are you doing? Yeah. And she said, the 100 days challenge. Then there was another participant that said, you know what? I've never done this before. I don't even know what my mama would say about me, but I raised all this money. I've never raised money before for a project in Haiti. And I'm flying out next week to Haiti to right. do a project there, a cleanup yeah. project there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and then a musician came on and, and he said, you know, when COVID happened, I stopped gigging, I stopped performing, yeah. and I was I was kind of in a, a slump and, you know, had to rebuild my repertoire and all of that. And I took on doing 100 days, going live on Facebook, playing my instruments, doing songs, and rekindling my repertoire. And this has actually changed my life. And so when that happened, I said, okay, so Dave, like, like, uh, you know, when you see that something is working, yeah, you don't stop doing the thing that's working. Yeah, absolutely not. Right? You want to, you want to, you want to build upon it, right? You want to make, you want to have what is working work for others, and and so that's that's what I decided to do was to go public with it, right? Oh, I see. And, yeah. and say, okay, let's make this available for everyone. Yeah, uh, because this is a system. It's a hundred days system, and now is a hundred days movement, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. a system that's based on neuroscience and behavior science and psychology, yes. yep. and and high performance yes. and some of the best practices used by top athletes, top of field mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. Yeah, you know, relationship uh, yep. gurus and experts and and all of that specialized knowledge is actually housed in the 100 days impact challenge in the way that is designed to help people meet their most important aims wow well that really sounds fantastic um i mean I, i'm an ex-athlete myself and <clears throat> obviously now i'm coaching i'm doing some life coaching in other other areas as well especially resiliency that's where i specialize which involves a lot of neuroscience because it's the way the brain mm -hmm. the chemicals in the brain will make you you know use that part of the brain, which helps you push forward with those goals. You know, the, the chemicals involved like dopamine and you, know, you probably know. Absolutely. So, so it's, it's, it's all related and it's <clears throat> all down to the thinking, you know, and the goals you put in for your vision and stuff like that. So yeah. Well, what, what type of athlete were you? A uh, track athlete, actually. So I competed in the Olympic trials in, in the UK, British Olympic trials a long time ago, but around the time when, um, Michael Johnson won in Atlanta. <laughs> so I did the British Olympic trials, China. I, I was 800 meters. So uh, that was, a, that was two, twice the pain that he went through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was a track athlete. Um, also a runner, I suppose, but I rubbed shoulders with the best. So that's pretty good. Um, gotcha. Yeah, we, we've actually had, had a couple of, of uh, Olympians on the 100 Days Impact Challenge all right. inner circle. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, that'd be great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I was around. Yeah. You need to get yeah. Sherry. Uh, what's her name? Carrie or whatever. The hundred meter runner. <laughs> the one that the one that got banned. I forgot her name now. Oh, I'm, the hundred. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. Okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Really. I'm looking forward <laughs> to the Olympics. You know. To yeah. To yeah. That's uh, next Friday. So the good thing about the inspiring thing about the Olympics is that anyone can watch it and they just get inspired, whether it is they do sports or other things, because it, you know, it's, it's what they say is the biggest show on earth. You know, and that's why you always have a big part at the end with the bands. Probably not this time because of COVID, but you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and the thing about the Olympics, you know, that it's a demonstration of, you know, our human human journey. A bit, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because, right, yeah. because the, the thing about the Olympics is not just the, the sport, it's the yeah. story behind the athletes, right? That, yeah, like, that's right. You the context, have... when you really get what it, what it takes 
to actually get on that type of stage, yeah. right? That is so inspiring because people go through all that they go through in order to make that happen. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a part of, of the great, it's just like, uh, you know, the X factor or American Idol well, or, that's right, yeah. or like, like that. Right. So yeah, yeah. it's not just that, that is a great singer, right? It's yeah. what's the story behind the singer. And so the hundred days impact challenge, you know, creates that story. Yeah. Once someone achieves their aim at the end of the challenge, right? They have that opportunity and we get a chance to acknowledge them with the ceremony actually and say, Hey, you know, congratulations on, on making it through your challenge. And so, so the, the challenge is, is a, a bit gamified. So there are people that, they, they get awards when we do, do our, our big launches and, and things like that. We're talking about stories because uh, let's focus on you, Marcus. Um, you certainly, I mean, you know, we're talking about working with resilience and bouncing back. You certainly had some some ups and downs yourself in your life, and, and you lost a lot of money. I think you got some huge debts. Tell us your story. I mean, even before you got involved in the music business, how did you how did you kind of like your humble beginnings begin to get involved, and where did this uh, bounce back came after you ran into that, and how did you run into it? Yeah, well, I've I've not known anything except for the music. Yeah. So I actually started in music when I was two years old. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, that's a... so I started playing piano when I was, I was two and, and my, my parents noticed that I had this ability to focus for long periods of time. Right. I think so they would put like rocks or pennies, like I, it didn't require a lot of things. I, I could take something and just play with it for, for, and focus my attention and my, my father as I've been told, uh, said, hey, why don't we try him on piano? So they got my, my grandmother's piano from another city and, and brought it in and, and I took to the piano. And, you know, usually when a two-year-old gets in front of piano, what do they usually do? What do you think that they do? Yeah, they start just... banging on the piano, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. They want to play with it like a toy, which obviously is. What yeah, they want to play like a toy. They want to play like yeah. a drum, right? So yeah, I, yeah. I have a, a six-year-old daughter, and when she was two, I saw what yeah. she did on the piano. And I, oh, wow. I, I have a six-year-old daughter as well, actually. <laughs> I, I had a six-year-old. I've got a six-year-old daughter, and I bought her a piano, an electric kid's piano uh -huh. for her birthday, just gone, actually. <laughs> so oh, wow. That, and she did exactly that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, But that's not what I did. All right, okay. So when I was two... I would press the notes and listen mm -hmm. for the notes and be very yeah. intentional and play, play yeah, yeah. few. And so, so I was a child prodigy. And yeah, so yeah. they, I was fortunate that my, my parents noticed early yeah. this ability. And, and so the piano led to me picking up other instruments like the saxophone and bass yeah. and drums. And, and so by the time I was eight years old, I was writing songs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the time I was nine, I was recording and producing and I got paid uh, for the yeah. first time, you know, as as a music producer. And then I started a record label when I was 12. And so yeah. so over the years, uh, what I experienced was, oh, wow, you know, there's this huge possibility inside of music. Like I realized, oh, I could actually I could do this. Right. Yeah. When I got that yeah, yeah. first check, I was, oh my goodness, I got $120. I'm nine years old with $120 for, for, for creating this Whitney Houston, yeah. uh, playback, um, that someone couldn't find. Um, but then what I discovered was, okay, I got to figure this thing out. Cause when I started my record label, you know, back then there was like cassette tapes and yeah, yeah, and, and right. CDs, and so I, yeah, so I would yeah. go into a record store and I look on the wall and I say, "Oh my goodness, I see posters here. I have to go get some posters." So I had I was fortunate I had some mentors that were my early investors. So I go back to right, my yeah. mentors and say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, I, I need to get some posters because I see that they have posters in the in the record stores, right?" And so. So I, I, I was fortunate to get involved in the entertainment industry early and in entrepreneurship early. And I, I, it, it took some, some time for me to figure it out. And so when I went to, to Berklee School of Music in Boston to their music business program, and they had studios and, and some of the best musicians in the world 
that I was able to collaborate with there, um, I started then to, to invest in myself. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I believe in investing in, in, in what's, in between yeah, the ears, boost, yeah. right? Yeah. Investing in, in our, our minds. So I'm constantly taking trainings and, and working on personal development. And at that yes, time, yes, yes. I started investing in equipment so I can make my music sound better. Right. And this so, is how old you then? Say what now? How old was you then? What age was you then? Oh, I was 21. Okay, yeah. So Yeah, I was 21. It was around the time when you... Yeah, yeah. No, Just discovering what route you're going to really take in life, really. <laughs> yeah, and so, so the credit card companies <laughs> said, "I want my money back." No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. It's an important. This is an important part. Probably where you you got in debt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, the, so those, those credit card companies really like college students, and and I really like the credit card companies because. They became my investors. It's, so Chase an Bank easy, and Discovery. And so I would get a very easy trap to get into. Oh my gosh. I, if you don't use those cars properly. Ooh, then, you know. Oh my goodness. And so, yeah. And so I, I hadn't developed that capacity in terms of, you know, personal finance and all of that at that, that juncture is like free money, <laughs> right? That I could. Use. So basically the credit card companies became my investors. Right, I see. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that that stage, you thought it was pretty good. Going, yeah, all this money's coming in. I don't mind. But obviously, with credit cards, it's high interest rate and a lot of other stuff going on. Yeah. Well, well. Here, here's the thing. You know, they don't really teach you in school. <laughs> yeah, they didn't no, teach yeah. you at Berkeley how to really manage your resources. Yeah. How to manage debt. And really, how to produce value in the marketplace. That's something that I had to discover on, on my own. Um, because there's a big difference between learning how to play an instrument or how to sing or how to songwrite or produce or, or how to you know, uh, do marketing and so forth. There's a big difference between that and being an entrepreneur. Yeah. And, so, and, and having uh, people that you work with and managing uh, teams and all of all of these types of things and so I had to learn and discover that for myself and and finding people that were really great at those things and so uh, again back to personal development and taking yeah. courses and so forth so I I'm a ferocious reader all right, and okay. so once I saw well wait a minute I'm, I'm seventy five thousand dollars in debt how yeah. am I gonna get out of this I better learn finance because this is not going to go well right and i'm having to call home and and ask for for money because i don't know how the the rent was going to get paid and i'm living yeah. in new york and it's expensive yeah. in new york and, yeah, of course. and yeah, yeah. you know all, all of those all of those things yeah and so so you was so around I, still early 20s 21 22 23 yeah, like in my 20s kind of, yeah, and yeah, so, yeah so i so i realized oh well, wait a minute i was taking this course and and i and I saw for myself in this course, wait a minute, you know what? I have to communicate my value that I had to unlearn some things. Right. So, and I, I, I train people that go through my programs around this. One of the things I had to unlearn was that my time is equal to money. Yeah. That was a trap. So people would say, oh, how much is it going to cost for studio time for an hour? Yeah. Right. So time is money. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, $40 an hour or $50 an hour or even a hundred dollars an hour in relationship to the value that I was providing at the time. Right. It just, it was completely undervalued because yeah, yeah. I didn't get at that time that whoa, there's that I have time and money collapse together, right? And because I've been producing so long, I, I move very quickly in the studio. Yeah. So, so within three hours, someone could come in with nothing and then three hours later have a song that can go directly to radio, which yeah. has happened before, 
right? Yeah. And so, so if I'm able to do that, right? Because I spent decades acquiring a skill and I'm valuing that at $40 an hour, as opposed to $4,000 an hour, yeah. as opposed to $40,000 an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? But, and, and, and see, and that, that, that sounds wrong, doesn't it? Well, it does, How yeah, much but... do you charge? $40,000 an hour. <laughs> right? But the thing is, um, you know, anyone can say, oh, okay, I want to change my rates from $40 an hour to, four, you know, as a coach, because lots of coaches do do that, I suppose, you know, because if you make a name for yourself, you can easily do that and you'd be in demand. So is that what happened to you as a producer? You, you, you suddenly had demand or? Well, 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 here, here's the thing. It's not about demand. Oh, okay. It's about understanding your value. Oh, okay. And when you disentangle time as money, and then you focus on money is the value that you provide the help that you are the specialized knowledge that you have right yeah. then we don't even talk about hours anymore there's not even a conversation about hours yeah, yeah. right the conversation then becomes about a result that someone is looking to achieve and yeah. how much that is value. Yeah. How valuable is that? How valuable is a hit song for a recording artist? I have friends of mine that have had one big hit that they've been living off of for 20 years. Well, how yeah, well that does happen. That, that does happen, doesn't it? Yeah. How valuable. And then sometimes, is that? you know, there's a remix of that version, you know, from 20 years ago or even longer. <laughs> well, not just remixes. But cover. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, it or gets covers covered. even, yeah. Sometimes it yeah, gets yeah. pampled. Sometimes yeah, yeah, exactly. it, gets, it gets used in, in yeah, yeah, a exactly. movie and all of a sudden it has a new life, right? It's like Ed Sheeran, he um I think he did a loop or, or something of Marvin Gaye song, he got sued for it though, and then <laughs> that's how powerful it is when that hit, you know, from so long ago, yeah. you know, Marvin Gaye. Yeah. So so are you gonna value the 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 creation of that hit by an hour? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right? So it's a now, mismatch. And so I had to learn these types of things and, and understand the value that I'm creating for people. And then so and then start and then that's one part of it, right? So there's an articulation of value. And then the other part of it is I came from Virginia. So I was born in Norfolk, okay. Virginia, right? Where, <laughs> Awful. <laughs> Norfolk where where yeah. uh, it's in the south. You know, Timberland and Missy oh, and Pharrell okay. and oh, Teddy right, Riley okay. moved to that Not area. Not that bad then. <laughs> yeah, so so I so that's I came I came from that area, the the Hampton yeah, Road yeah. area, and and so the the other the other piece of it is so you have a communication of value, right? Right. Yeah. Right. And then you have the separation of of time out of money, time from money. Yeah. And then the other piece that's, that's super important. See, in Virginia, I was taught, don't talk so much about all your accomplishments. Yeah. Right? You want to stay humble and, and all that. Wrong. Oh, really? Okay. Wrong. <laughs> Think about it. Okay, so there were times where I would I would win awards and so forth. I wouldn't tell anybody. Yeah. Right? I had songs placed on big shows or with artists. I don't really talk about it. Right? So how would anyone know that I was capable of helping them achieve success if I didn't talk about it? They wouldn't know. And so all of a sudden, the value I'm able to provide is not being communicated because, you know, I'm, I'm you know, kind of keeping it to myself, my, you know, what's happening and all of that. Yeah. So I had to, that's another wrong, right? That's wrong. Right. You must communicate what it is that you're up to and not from bragging or, or not like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make myself better than somebody else or anything like that. 
but or or you know just trying to you know shine get your shine on or what whatever that is for not that but it's a communication of what you have to offer and the world that comes with that right yeah yeah and so so once i started doing those things and, and there are other things that that i did which you know i, I have included in wealth and impact boot camp and and it's, it's yeah. all over like there's different practices and and things that i've learned from billionaires uh things that i've learned from centimillionaires over, over my journey that i that yeah. i had to put into a program so other people could could take the learnings that I've learned and apply it to themselves. And so as a result, some people have become financially independent. Some people have grown large audiences, like, you know, big transformations have, have happened in Wealth and Impact Bootcamp because again, I've shared just like I'm sharing here. Yeah. And, and so, so for your audience members, um, you know, you want to be someone that is a communicator of who you are for people in the world so that they get who you are. Yeah. And so like that. Wow. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, well, obviously from the sporting world, one of the big example of, of kind of like giving some kind of promotion, because you're talking about self-promotion here a little bit, but in the boxing world, that's huge, you know, to get these fights going and you know, in the professional boxing world, not in the amateur, you know, with the Olympics going on, it's great that they get there, but they don't really do too much. They call it hype, but it's not hype. It's all part of getting the, to sell the tickets to get people to watch pay per view, you know, and, and saying this is the best part of the century. But are you kind of saying that that works in the music business as well, or in, in any walks of life? Is that what you're saying? Um, yes, I'm. I'm saying, and I'm. I'm not talking about hype. No, that's what I mean. They call right. it hype in boxing, but it's not hype. It's right. not hype. It's it's marketing. It's marketing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I, I yes, I'm saying that whether you're in the music industry, whether you're a doctor. Whether yeah. you're a dentist, yeah, whether yeah. you're a coach, an author, yeah, right? It's all about Promotion. creating visibility. Right. I see. Yeah. So that people can identify, oh, it's you that I need. It's you that can help me. It's Got you that. that has the keys for whatever it is that I'm looking to do. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so so what you do when you don't do that is you're doing a disservice to people by staying humble. Yeah, yeah. Right. By staying humble and not talking about what it is that you have the value to offer people. And yeah. you're actually hurting people that you could be helping. Absolutely. Yeah. Now I see, I see your point. I know, I know some doctors that are on my network, my, you know, like LinkedIn and that, and they're doing exactly that. They're, they're also quite well known because they're on MB, you know, on the, TV all the time talking about health issues and they're quite a celebrity yeah. and they know, although they work at a regular practice, probably a well-known one, you know, they work as a doctor, but they're going on TV saying, well, this, you know, they do it in the UK as well. They have a, a regular celebrity doctor on there talking about, or, you know, the coronavirus, especially now, you know, this is what's going on, blah, 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 you know, and it can affect this health condition. And yeah. So, um, yeah, no, that's, no. that's, that's the kind of thing you're talking about, isn't it? That's not that's, boasting, is it? Yeah, no, that's, that's, that is communicating. Uh, yeah. a difference yeah. and making a difference in yes, a bigger yeah. way. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, so what happens for that doctor that goes on television? Okay. Mm. You call him a celebrity uh, doctor because he's on television. Yeah. Because everyone gets to know them. <laughs> right. Because he gets yeah. known. Right. And I yeah. help people develop celebrity. Right. And so, yeah, yeah. so it's like, okay, so he's on, so he's on television. And yeah. well, okay. Do you think his practice, his practice when he gets off of television, do you think people will pay a little bit more for him to see them? I'm sure he'll be able to raise his uh, rate or she will be able to raise the rate because they are going to be on demand, aren't they? I mean, I know you're saying it's not yes. about demand, but yes, it, it starts to cause demand. Yeah. Right. That's the, so the demand becomes a byproduct. Yeah. And then, so when you start having demand, what happens in economies when there's a lot of demand and you have a scarce resource, like somebody's time, then if they don't raise their prices, yeah. Right. Then they're doing themselves a disservice. 
So that doctor can now, because they're on television in front of more people and more people getting exposed to their specialized knowledge and help and value, now they can raise their rates. And now me as a music producer, having gotten that, yeah, I was able to raise my rates and I was able to get myself out of debt. I was able to get $75,000 out of debt. And I remember getting this check one day for $20,000 and I'm out of debt. And I look at the $20,000 check and I said, now what? Yeah. So I learned everything I needed to do in order to get out of debt. But now what do you do with the money? Because you're going to keep making that same money, even though now you're back in, you know, well, in, in the money again. You, you cleared your debt, but you're still making that money. So. Well, so, now, so now what do you do with the money? So, so now I have to learn how to, how to invest it, how to, how to yeah. manage it, how to, how to do those things. And, so and no credit so, cards. Huh? Yeah. No, yeah. So, <laughs> no credit yeah, cards. So, so, so all of that. And then, yeah, yeah. And then there's nothing wrong with credit cards. No, no. See, as long as you use it properly. See, see, I, I have a different perspective on credit cards at this point. Right. And I have a different perspective on debt at this point because debt can be leveraged to build wealth. Yeah. So there's, there's consumer debt, right? That's not making you money. But if, but if you get debt, that's going to actually make you money, right? More than the percentage that you have to pay it back. So for, let's just use a quick example. So let's say, you know, your credit card is 9% and, and you take $10,000 and put something on $10,000 and, and it's 9%. Well, if you put that $10,000 into something that's going to yield 20%, then now all of a sudden you actually are making money off of that debt. Yeah. Right. That's a different well, it, way of looking at credit cards. Well, it's a bit like um, when people invest in properties and when they've got three properties, now they're going to get 10 properties. They're not, they're not um, using their own money, they're using other people's money, including exactly. it's called leverage, I suppose. It is called leverage and, yes. and leverage is one of the distinctions that I, that I love to, to use Yeah, yeah. because yeah. there are so many different ways that leverage can be, be used. But, yeah, yeah. but so, so all, all of these things are, are, you know, just have been part of my journey. And so, so I've created, because I, I really stand for people thriving, I yeah. stand for dignity and compassion for myself and, and all human beings. Yeah. I want people to be able to live into their full potential and be free of the suffering, whether it's financial suffering, whether it's emotional suffering, whether it's mental suffering, whether it's environmental suffering. And so, so everything that I've, I've created, whether it's the Wealth and Impact Bootcamp or whether it's the, the 100 Days Impact Challenge or whether it's this LinkedIn yeah. uh, Wealth and Impact Bootcamp that, that's launching uh, shortly. So, right, okay. Right? The, yeah. These are all products that, that I've created um, to really help people elevate yeah, yeah, well, and uplift. So Marcus, I mean, we, we're going to talk about the 100 Days Challenge. I mean, one of the other things is that obviously you've worked with some great names out there. Obviously, I quoted a few and, you know, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm a seasoned veteran now. So I've been around big names in sports, in different sports, because I've done, you know, things up to, it's called a Commonwealth Games, but it's like the Olympic Games now. So you, I was around other sports people that were you know, big names, mm -hmm. but you've been around big music names, obviously, you know, the ones I've mentioned and probably, you know, you've probably been around yeah, you know, so, for a so while. Here's, with some... here's what I want to say about big names. Yeah. Every big name started off as a small name. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Right. Yeah. There, there's no one. Well, I'll take that back. I was about to say there's no one that starts off as a, as a big name, but if you're born into a family of celebrity, you, That's, you know, you, you, you can be born into a name, yeah, yeah, right? But for most people, most people are born into a small name. Yeah. And I've seen that in sports as well, because they want to use sports as a way to right. get out of either poverty or to right. get, to uh, you know, their... get through bullying or something like that. You know, they, they, they use it as a way to get through. Yeah. And, and increasing the value of your name. So when we say small name versus big name, 
what what I'm talking about here in terms of small name is the marketplace hasn't realized its value yet. So it's like a, oh, a it's like a penny stock that's about yeah, to be yeah, yeah. Amazon. Absolutely, yeah. Right? So you may be a penny stock, some unknown company, but but inside of you exists Amazon. Yeah. Right? Inside of you is Jeff Bezos before people knew the name Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Right? He's, going and so, off, he's going off in a spaceship at the moment. <laughs> it's probably in space now. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Yeah. And, and so, so that this is, this is a, a thing. So I, I love uh, developing artists. Um, mm. My company supports about 450 different writers, producers, artists, some Grammy Award winners, some Emmy yeah. Award winners, some people that are known, some people that are unknown. And when, when we have writers camps and, and people come, uh, to LA and, and to participate in a writer's camp, you know, it's not about the name. No. It's about once you're in that room and once the 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 beat starts going, once the microphone is turned on, yeah. it's an even playing field. Same thing in sports, uh, right? Same thing. It yeah. could be unknown, but when 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 the when they say, oh, go, and everyone any, starts anyone. running down that, uh, it doesn't matter what your name is. When you look at a final, it's anyone's final, unless you really like Usain Bolt or something like that. But even then, it's still anyone's final. If something happens to him, like a full start or injury in the race, you know, <laughs> pulled hamstring, <laughs> it's anyone's race. See, like you say, it's a living play forward, isn't it? Yes, it's anyone's final. Yeah. I love that. See, because because yeah. if you're going about your life in that way that that you are a champion, yeah, right? That you are a gold medalist in your field, that you're a gold medalist in music, right? Or that you're a gold medalist in whatever it is your, your field is, if you are acting as if. I was just interviewing this uh, professional uh, uh, basketball player. Yeah. And he didn't have anybody in his environment. His name is Jay, Jay, uh, Dre Baldwin. Okay. Right. He didn't have anyone in his environment that was saying, oh, you can make it, you can be a professional basketball player, right? Mm -hmm. He acted as if. So he trained as if he was going to be a professional basketball player. So when that yeah. opportunity got created for him to try out for a professional team, his acting as if made it a reality. So whatever it is that you want to do, if you want to become a big name, meaning someone that has big marketplace value, yep. okay, then you have to do the things that big names do. That's right, yeah. You have it's to... all about mindset. It's about the mindset. So this is a beautiful thing about 100 Days Impact Challenge, yeah. right? So mindset is a partial solution. Right. I see. It's partial but incomplete. And so so when so there's mindset, there's environment, there's there's the Yeah, so mindset is a partial and incomplete solution. Yeah. Right? To to bringing value to your name in the marketplace so that you're 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 increasing your value to become a big name and whatever that that thing is, right? So there's there's the mindset aspect which is, you know, all what's happening in between your, your, your ears. Yeah. Then, but, but even with mindset, there's a, there's a biology aspect, yes. right? Yeah. So, so if your amygdala is, is gets hijacked, right. Mm -hmm. And you lose capacity. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how you can think yourself all that you want, but if your amygdala gets hijacked for some reason, then you lose capacity. Yeah. Right. If you're tired, then no matter what your mindset is, right? At some point, your body's going to break down. So yeah. mindset is one piece. Your body, your environment, yes, right? All of these these other factors determine your success as a champion or not. Right. I see. I see. So this is where a kind of neuro neuroscience can come into it as well, really, because that's connected with mind and body, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and actually, 
it's all it's, it's so much about neuroscience that, that's not realized that people don't know so our thoughts are actually physical yeah and and the way the neural networks connect yeah yeah you can physically see thoughts happening yeah. in the brain yep right and so when you're provide when you're doing something repetitiously then you're solidifying and uh, you're awakening yes and then solidifying networks in your brain yes yes that you it brings new meaning to the word the words you become it yes you actually do become it yeah because your brain becomes it yeah yeah by connecting those connections and it's building and building and building like that exactly for those thought patterns to get bigger and grow bigger so it's exactly. kind of like um that's why in sports and i know in, uh, maybe in music and other business like in, in the entrepreneurs they use visualization a lot now that's a very powerful tool but there's other areas as you know that's only one aspect you know there's obviously mindfulness there's nlp there's a, quite, a, quite a lot of tools being used but visualization is a physical way of looking at something to make the mind think of something that you're going to do that's powerful before you actually do it you know, absolutely like you absolutely. visualize that gold medal before you win it kind of thing and it's building those connections in the mind because you're going to do it you're re absolutely. rehearsing it absolutely yeah, yeah. You, you visualize that song before you hop yeah. on stage to sing it you, exactly, you visualize yeah. the the response from the from the audience the connection that you're going to make yeah. you you visualize that moment i do that before i walk into a creative environment before i walk into the creative environment i'm i'm already there visualizing an outcome right an outcome of greatness right so visualization is, is you just hit on a very important thing yeah yeah and so there there but there are many things that we could talk about yeah yeah <laughs> i mean i learned because i've been around sports coaching at first but now there's so many because i was in the like the late 70s early 80s you know i've been around you know as a kid from school mm -hmm. so um you know it, it, it's everywhere now that kind of thinking is not only in sports it's in business it's in music it's everywhere now so it's it's very powerful so i think this is really a great thing this 100 days impact and um but when people sign up what would they expect to do in in the 100 days impact how do they go through the, the signing up process and then throughout to explain yeah it? so they they just go to 100 days with a z impact challenge.com yeah right 100 days with a z impact challenge.com uh they can sign up there it's, um, you know, there's a, a mini course. It really is a system uh, program. So there's a, there's a course inside of it that, that talks about some of the, touches on some of the things that we've mentioned here, but it goes deeper. Um, and then there's a community, there's, there, there's an inner circle where we bring on guests every Monday um, and we have top of field people, some, some people that you would never ever be able to to actually, you know, see in person, right? Yeah, so yeah. pop stars on there, like oh, you, that wow. you that okay. you you come on, you be able to interact with them, yeah, you be able yeah, to yeah. interact with me as yeah. well uh, around your challenge, and and so so yeah. So once people sign up for uh, the hundred days uh, inner circle, a whole world opens up <laughs> for yeah, them because yeah. they they get access to all the replays and 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 oh, like right. that. So yeah. so what I what I've created inside of hundred days. Uh, impact challenge is a tremendous amount of value that's, yes. that's well um, exceeding other things that I've seen in 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 the marketplace in terms of challenges and 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 there's a commitment uh, that we have in my organization. You know, we're this is we're in this for at least ten years because this is a movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure with movements they grow bigger and. Uh... Like, you know, I mean, now you've got books on branding, and I know it's specific to music business, it can apply anywhere, really, you know, branding, but, you know, yeah. this is a brand as well, isn't it? 100 Days Impact that can grow. Yes. So, um, you know, I mean, it sounds, it sounds really <laughs> great and, and spot on with, with what I know about, you know, in my own sort of niche, if you like, you know, and it all, all the same thing. People from all walks of life can actually use 100 Days Impact to get where they want to go where they, from where they are now, can't they? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So how does, how much does it cost or, or does it, um, I mean, can people sort of try it out or how does it work? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a dollar a day. Oh, well, that's less than a cup of coffee. 
a cup of coffee will probably just wake you up, but this will you move you forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to, to join a challenge. Um, and then the inner circle is a membership. So every, every right. month and depend upon, you know, where, you know, how fast you act on the, the, the membership to join the inner circle uh, like yeah. that. But, but basically, you know, someone can, can step into a world of opportunity to really get after their most important aims to, to move. Yeah and break through beyond uh, fear. They get videos yeah. every single day uh, yeah. from me and, and emails and text message reminders every yeah. single day to, to encourage them, um, to, to keep them present uh, to yeah. what they're committed to. And, and so that there's a whole system, like I said, there's a whole system in place to, to help move people from uh, where they are to where they wanna be. Great, that sounds fantastic. Uh, maybe I'll, one day I'll, I'll be able to jump in and help, um, you know, some of the, the people there in the, in yeah, the, in the little have circle. Have you, have <laughs> Give some of my coaching expertise. and uh... athletic back, background. That's right, yeah, yeah. In, yeah, yeah. In, yeah interview right. you in the inner circle. That's <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great stuff. Right. Well, Marcus, it's great having you here. Um, I know there's been a couple of technical hiccups, but um, we, we managed to do it at last. So, um... All right. <laughs> This is this is going to be um, um, what I call a signature episode for my relaunch. So um, this will be played back, and you know I'm, I'm going to post it, you know, regularly, you know, every month or so to remind people about this program, the Hundred Days, because okay. obviously I'm a coach as well, and I'd like to endorse this if you don't mind. So uh, I'll be yeah. sort of promoting this episode and your work um, doing this. It's, it's really great that I think you're doing. So yeah. can you remind well, thank everyone? Thank you so much for for having me on. I, I really you know appreciate the conversation and yeah, yeah. and all that what you're is, doing and that you're that you're providing for for people uh through this medium um yeah you yeah, have so much, much value to offer people and and so it's, i'm i'm so uh happy to be able to to exchange with you in this way oh that's fantastic marcus and i was really grateful um i'm really grateful for you to come on the show as well and, and share this very very great work you're doing as well and also to share your story about where you come from and how you've managed it so get where you are today as well, so people can be inspired. And that's what your show is all about, really, you know. So, um, yeah, thanks a lot as well for coming on the show as well, Marcus. All right. Okay, excellent. Bye-bye. That's all for this episode. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe, and leave a review over on Apple Podcasts. Or head over to my website, davepalmer.com, and click on Rate Show. Well, that's all for now. But I'll see you in the next episode of The Dave Palmer Show. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.